completes all operations of the emergency alert system. All stations may now resume regular programs for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy and ruthless conspiracy and ruthless conspiracy, and ruthless conspiracy. And ruthless conspiracy. So, did you know that centralizing the food market has been on the minds of tyrants and technocrats for years? Did you know that on July 28, 2020, the Rockefeller Foundation published a document called, and I quote, Reset the Table, and it's all about the upcoming food shortages. Now, in order to find out some info, we are going to read a section from the Thread Irish substack. A link will be in the description. And you should, you should check out the entire article. Hopefully, they don't get mad about me reading a good chunk of their article for a video. I mean, it is worth it though. It's important, so I'm just going to roll with it. Just if you can, show them some support, visit their substack, you know the deal. Anyway, on July 8th, 2020, a little known document was published by the Rockefeller Foundation called, and I quote again, Reset the Table, meeting the moment to transform the US food system. This document flew under the radar for many, but it is now more important than ever especially in the light of what has been happening to food processing facilities being destroyed globally. The first question most people should ask is how would the Rockefeller Foundation know about upcoming food shortages, you know, back in 2020. However, it is interesting that the title was Reset the Table. Surely, this is just another coincidence considering the Great Reset was announced on June 3rd of 2020. Amazing how they can get all their ducks in a row lined up so quickly considering COVID had only been officially on the block for a few months. And really, we shouldn't be remotely surprised by the documents they publish, especially considering that in 2010, they published a document called Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development, in which, and this is really crazy, they accurately predicted the COVID outbreak. But as I have mentioned before, the Rockefeller Foundation is also deeply involved in the move to digital ID, a cashless society, and social credit systems. However, what about reset the table? What can we take from it? Actually, quite a lot. Now, before we jump into the document itself, it's important to look at the ties to the World Economic Forum, of which there are many. Many of those who contributed to the document have conflicts of interest, and you can check this out on pages 21 through 23. However, this includes global food companies such as Danone and Mars, the American Heart Association, which are dedicated to fighting heart disease and stroke. Oh, the irony. From there, the US FDA is also involved. And this also includes the Brookings Institute, Johns Hopkins University. Yes, it's the same Johns Hopkins who published a document predicting the SPARS pandemic. And of course, they were involved in Event 201. However, there are also the inevitable links to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And of course, any university on the list has more than likely received funding. In the case of Tufts University, who has received millions and millions of dollars. And as you can see, Duke University has also received hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, you get the point. The ties are everywhere. And to check out everyone who is involved in this, you can go to page 21 and 22. Naturally, this is all being dressed up as being beneficial to mankind, but once you dig deeper, the truth begins to emerge of their real plan. The one-page foreword written by Dr. Shaw, and especially its opening sentence, is really quite telling, and I quote, America faces a hunger and nutrition crisis unlike any this country has seen in generations. And then it goes on, and I quote again, In many ways, COVID-19 has boiled over long-simmering problems plaguing America's food system. What began as a public health crisis fueled an economic crisis, leaving 33% of families unable to afford the amount or quality of food they want. School closures put 30 million students at risk of losing the meals they need to learn and thrive. The finger is firmly, firmly being pointed at COVID-19 for causing many of the food problems. And that is quite amazing, considering that COVID has only been around for a few months when this report was written. However, they go on to say, and I quote, This paper draws directly on those rich discussions to lay out a framework for change toward an equitable, nourishing, and sustainable U.S. food system. You know, they are always there with the buzzwords, aren't they? The imperative to change the U.S. food system is not new. 
Many individuals and organizations have been working to address it for years, if not decades. What is new is the urgency and opportunity in this moment to make transformative progress. We offer some immediate actions here, but this is far from a comprehensive playbook which must address many other important issues that deeply affect food and nutrition, such as living wages, housing, and transportation. All of us need to write that playbook together over the coming year. You know, equitable and sustainable seem to be very much a part of UN Agenda 2030. This comprehensive playbook he refers to would naturally include universal basic income as being part of the solution. They admit to trying to change the system for years, but ignore the question, who benefits? Now, amazingly, they admit, and knew back in 2020, that 94% of people dying from COVID had underlying health conditions, predominantly being diet-related, and I quote, These images tell a powerful story of the economic and public health consequences of poor nutrition, with 94% of deaths from COVID-19 among individuals with an underlying condition, the majority of which are diet-related. Now, let's not forget that the Rockefeller Foundation is partly to blame for the state of food and people's health in the U.S. Medicine. When it was discovered that drugs could be produced from petroleum, America's top oil mogul ordered his army of propagandists to invert reality accordingly. Medicines used for thousands of years were suddenly classified as alternative, while the new, petroleum-based, highly addictive, and patentable drugs were declared the gold standard. After buying the German pharmaceutical company that manufactured chemicals of war for Adolf Hitler, Rockefeller leveraged his political influence by pressing Congress to declare natural healing modalities unscientific quackery. Rockefeller then took control of the American Medical Association and began offering massive grants to top medical schools under the mandate that only his approved curriculum be taught. Any mention of the healing powers of herbs, plants, and diet was erased from most medical textbooks. Doctors and professors who objected to Rockefeller's plan were crucified by the media, removed from the AMA, and stripped of their license to teach and practice medicine. Those who dared to speak out were arrested and jailed. When evidence began to emerge that petroleum-based medicines were causing cancer, Mr. Rockefeller founded the American Cancer Society through which he suppressed that information. John D. Rockefeller is duly credited as the founder of the pharmaceutical industry and the reason that medical error is currently the third leading cause of death in America. This is not an indictment against doctors. More than anyone, they are under the stranglehold of the single largest lobbying power in Washington. Every year, the pharmaceutical industry spends at least twice the amount as big oil to influence laws, policies, and public perception. Thanks to Mr. Rockefeller, the architect of American monopolies, no industry has more power over our lives than Big Pharma. They even admit this themselves, and I quote, The Green Revolution, which the Rockefeller Foundation played a role in seeding and scaling, was effective and successful in addressing calorie-based hunger and averting mass starvation but it left a legacy that we see clearly today, including overemphasis on staple grains at the expense of more nutrient-rich foods, reliance on chemical fertilizers that deplete the soil, and overuse of water. The document is very much framed in the classic Hegelian dialectic of problem-reaction-solution. Here is the problem that they have created, you know which one I'm talking about, and now they want to implement the solution, which is transforming the global food supply. Naturally, this all ties into lands being destroyed, climate change, and trying to move people back into smart cities. Surprise, surprise. And I quote, And food production, processing, and transportation has become one of the primary causes of the environmental fragility facing our planet, responsible for widespread deforestation, loss of biodiversity, water pollution, and between 13% and 25% of greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change threatens to further compound nutrition insecurity, intensify food loss and waste. It will deepen inequities in food distribution and worsen impacts on farmers and food chain workers. According to the report, what is the solution? They say they want to move from a focus on maximizing shareholder returns to, and I quote, a more equitable system focused on fair returns and benefits to all stakeholders, building more equitable prosperity throughout the supply chain. 
There's that term again, quote unquote stakeholders, which Klaus Schwab loves to use, as in stakeholder capitalism. In other words, they want total control of the supply chain while the World Economic Forum members get richer. Perfect. How are they going to take control of the supply chain? Well, one of the ways is through data collection. Yes, on people's spending and eating habits and getting these huge global companies or stakeholders who are all World Economic Forum partners to work together. Ah yes, corporatism, the answer to our problems. No, it's not. Anyway, they have here number four and I quote, modernize data and technology platforms to provide the tools needed to operate the system more efficiently in normal operation and under stress. Number five, unify actors across multiple sectors health, education, environment, labor, nutrition, agriculture, into a collaborative advocacy movement. Okay then. Of course, this will be achieved by, and I quote, success will require numerous changes to policies, practices, and norms. In other words, laws will have to be changed. It is also being sold to the general public as being good for our health, and food is being considered as medicine, which it is, I'll give them that. However, they go on to say that they have the ability, once this system is implemented, to make sure you won't get fat and sick. I highly doubt that. And I quote, investing in healthy and protective diets will allow Americans to thrive and bring down our nation's suffocating healthcare costs. Poor quality diets are the leading cause of rising costs, yet the healthcare system places little to no emphasis on nutrition. And again, that is true, I agree with that but they want you to eat the bugs. That is their solution. Yes, instead of focusing on healthy eating, their plan is to centralize and control the food supply into one body, one single executive office. Kinda has a ring to it like a one world government too, doesn't it? Now, what is really, really interesting is that they make a reference to 9-11. Now, when this event occurred, it was for everyone's safety that the Department of Homeland Security was set up. People were afraid. Problem, reaction, solution. All over again. And it would seem that again, it's the same actors involved. And I quote, Invest in coordinated federal, state, and local capabilities and emergency response. More than 15 agencies at the federal level alone directly regulate and implement programs that impact food from farm to fork. To add to that complexity, many food access programs are implemented at the state and local level. They go on to say, and I quote again, Similar to the realization that prompted the creation of the Department of Homeland Security and the Directorate of National Intelligence after 9-11, the current medical predicament illustrated a clear need for a single executive office responsible for better coordination across government agencies and levels, as well as with community organizations that people know and trust. This report is dressed up as being in the public interest, yet it is anything but. For two years, the medical predicament was the focus of attention. However, it was only stage one of Agenda 2030. The total and utter destruction of the food supply system seems to be now well underway. And this is all too evident. Of course, when we keep hearing politicians talk about the Great Transition, what they are referring to is the Great Reset and Agenda 2030. What they are doing is centralizing power in every conceivable way. This is a global system and it all results in total control. Once again, this is Helio Wave. If you like the content, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you want to. If you're in a position to, consider subscribing on Locals or Subscribestar. Make sure you disobey those true fascistas, and of course, I hope you have a good night.